Are you rebuilding a Buick 3.8 V6 from 95 to 2005 and found that the counterbalancer shaft you can't get parts for or even buy the shaft? I have the solution for that, so stay tuned. If you're rebuilding a, a Buick 3.8, which the Buick, when you say Buick 3.8, it's used in the Pontiac Chevrolets, but it's the Buick, uh, I think the VIN number 8th eight, eight is K, but um, I'll look that up and I'll put that down in the description, which one, what the VIN number is. But uh, if you've got a 95 to 2005 uh, V6 GM engine 3.8, it's got a counterbalancer shaft in it. If you buy a master kit, the kit does not come with any bearings or bushings for the counterbalancer shaft. And a matter of fact, when I went to look this up, all I can find on the internet everywhere is to delete the counterbalancer shaft. Well, if you're like me and you're wanting to put the motor back the exact way it was, you're going to want a bearing and a bushing. I have found the bushing and the bearings, and I'm going to put the numbers down in the description, so please go down in the description and look for it. I've got all the stuff, all the information you need. You can buy the counterbalancer shaft from the dealer. However, <clears throat> it's like three, three weeks to a month out to get it. You have to pay for it before it's ordered. Um, and it's, I think it's around $100. But I don't think that it doesn't come, it comes with a bearing. Because if, you, if you're looking at the counterbalancer shaft, you've got the gear, then you've got a roller bearing, and it's got a clip that you normally tear up to get the shaft out with. And then you know, on the back side, it's a pressed in bushing, although the books call it a bearing, but it's like a Babbitt bearing. It's just a bushing, and it's pressed in, and it doesn't have any moving components. It's not rollers, it's just a bushing. It doesn't come with that. So all you get is the shaft and the bearing. I do, I'm not sure if the gear comes on or not uh, for the $100. Uh, it's hard to find the gear, actually. But most of the, gears, I mean, most of the time, the gear doesn't wear out. You can just clean up really well. The bearing taps off real easy and I'll show you in this video or if you use a bearing separator and I'll put a, a link to that part too or that tool it's you can get a small one clamp around it and tap it off in a vise or put it in a press I use a press but not everybody has one um, it's real easy to get off I'll show that in this video how to take the bearing off to put the new one on is basically just set up there tap it on with a hammer and a socket and it's done and the bushing I'll put the part number down on that but this is pretty stupid I, I, I don't understand the idiotic uh, nonsense of not putting that in a master kit. I mean, you're obviously going to put that back together. It makes you wonder if you're going to get a remanufactured engine, you know, like if you go down to AutoZone or O'Reilly's or someplace and buy a reman engine, and it's going to have the counterbalancer shaft. Does that mean that they're reusing the old bearings? Because I had to go through hoops and loops. I had to actually take the bearing off and match it up at a, at a bearing supplier to get it matched. Once I found the number, I found it's easy to get. Matter of fact, you can get it from Amazon. And like I said, and it comes with the clip already on the bearing. So you don't have to worry if you tear the one you have up, the little snap ring that, that lets it come out. No big deal because it comes with it. So anyhow, watch the video. See, what, uh, see how I just kind of clean the shaft up. And plus, I also clean the shaft up with my kerosene and uh, uh, super clean. And I have another video for that, so be sure to look for that at the uh, end of this video. So let's get into the video and see what I do here. In order to remove this bearing, we're going to use a tool called bearing separator. And this is often used in a press, but if you don't have a press, you can use a harmonic balance puller. That's what these, or a, a type of puller that you can put bolts into. But you'll see. You've got just a little bit of a gap. And over on this side, you got plenty of freedom. So we're going to put the bearing separator, catch it, and then uh, pull it off. You're going to want the flat side. The bearing separator is concaved. And you could 
probably try to catch it that way, but it's best since you're wanting to push this bearing off. And you can just take your fingers and hold it. I've already done this before, so all you got to do is pretty much just tighten up these nuts with your fingers. There's really no reason. If you, the only reason why you use a, a wrench on these bolts to tighten them up would be to uh, to help kind of dig into that uh, gap. But you're not going to have a whole lot of digging before you start digging into the actual counterbalance shaft. And now, like I said, you could put this in your vise like this and take a brass hammer and hit on this and knock that bearing off. This bearing is not hardcore pressed. It, uh, as a matter of fact, this is the new bearing, but you can tap it with a hammer and it'll come off. You can put it in a press and press down in the middle to make it come off. If you don't have a press and you don't have a way, you don't have a vise or anything you want to beat against, you can also use saw horses. It's anything that just you can drop this in to catch this bearing separator. You can use a harmonic balancer puller. Uh, that's what these threads are right here. And you just put it here. And of course then you just pull. So you can use that to pull the bearing off with. Take installing the bearing. To install the bearing, all you do is just set it up on the shaft, make sure it's even, and just take a, a socket that'll fit over the shaft itself. Use about the same size as the uh, center part of the bearing, and you just tap it on. <clears throat> and then we've got to install the gear, and it's got a keyway in it, and there's a little notch. So if you don't have the bearing quite all the way down, when you tighten this up, it'll completely set it in place. And oh, by the way, when you're tapping that bearing down, be sure to put it on something solid, but put you a towel, a piece of cardboard, something. You don't want to damage this end because this end runs in a bushing. Okay, after I put the gear and the bolt back in, the... Uh, I have to confirm the specs. I found a spec of it 50 foot pounds, but it may be more than that. I'll, I'll put the actual accurate uh, torque setting, setting in the uh, description. I am done. Now it might be a good idea to go ahead and polish the end of the shaft that goes into the bushing that's pressed into the block. Uh, and here what I did is I started off with some 220. I mean, I didn't really work it real hard because it wasn't that bad, but I started off with 220, went over until I made sure I got all the little burrs and anything out of it, any kind of lines and stuff, and then I, then I took some, um, I believe, 320 to finish it off. It might have been 400, but uh, just get you some emery cloth. You don't need a whole lot of it. Uh, you should be able to buy a foot of it, either in a pack or used to. They'll parts out the sort of by the foot, but... Uh, just get your cinnamon cloth, and like I said, you, know, you can use sandpaper just as long as it's like wet or dry, and do 220 and 360 and until the shaft looks pretty good. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any comments, please uh, leave them. I always check my comments and reply to them. If you want, you can contact me through my website because uh, I have a few people that want to send me pictures or get more in-depth conversations. It's a lot harder to do in the comments, but uh, either way, contact me. I'm, I'll help for free. I don't mind getting advice and because uh, you may have something rare or different on your 3.8 that I'm, I'm not aware of but uh, please contact me if you have any questions and if you like this video be sure to like and subscribe and check back because I'm always working on something crazy. See you in the next one.